Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. So in this video that I did a month ago, I was talking about one of Apple's most anti-repair moves yet, which is that you no longer can replace the sleep sensor on a modern MacBook. The sleep sensor is the part that tells the computer to go to sleep when you've closed the lid. It detects that you've closed the lid, and after you've closed the lid, decides to let the computer know that it's time to go to sleep. They used to use a hall sensor, and now they use some sort of angle sensor that requires calibration. The calibration wouldn't be a problem if you received access to the calibration software when you purchased the computer as the owner of the computer, but as I've mentioned many times on this channel, when you buy something in 2023, you don't really own it. You own the right to use it until the company decides that you don't anymore. So as a result of that, you need to use Apple's proprietary software that they do not make available to end users that requires connecting to their servers in order to actually run that software so that when you replace the angle sensor, it will work. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. And in the cases where it doesn't work, you're kind of screwed. I went over applying for the IRP program here and Apple actually did respond to me. I responded to their response and now I'm at the point of getting to sign this agreement. So I'll put an email up on the screen. This is the email that I received from Apple. It looks like they'd like me to sign an NDA. So I thought I'd read it to all of you and you tell me if you think this is a good idea. I'd really prefer to hear back by the end of the day as to what you think because it looks like this expires at the end of the day. It says Apple number NDA, which I imagine stands for non-disclosure agreement, mutual confidentiality agreement. This mutual confidentiality agreement between Apple and Rossman Repair Group is effective as of April 28th. Scope and definitions. In this agreement, confidential information means any non-public information or material disclosed by one party or any of its affiliates or consultants to the other party or any of its affiliates or consultants in connection with the discussions regarding a company's interest in the IRP program. So anything that they discuss with me regarding this program looks like it would be covered as confidential information. Meaning, again, it seems like if I sign this agreement, and the program doesn't actually include anything useful, I would not be able to talk about the fact that the Apple IRP program includes nothing useful because I will have signed this agreement, which is probably why you haven't heard any pushback against the Apple IRP program. A lot of people have commented in my comment section saying, if this program is so bad as you've said it is in the past, why don't we hear people complaining about it? And I think a big part of that is they sign this agreement that appears to, in my opinion, I'm not a lawyer, legally destroy them if they decide to say anything about what the program actually allows them to do. Confidential information also includes the fact that Apple and company have discussed the possibility of company becoming an IRP and the terms, conditions, and existence of this agreement. So again, not only are you not allowed to talk about the program, but somebody who signed up for this can't even say that they are under an NDA. So they can't even say, listen, I'd love to talk about the program, but I can't, I'm on an NDA. They're just, they're invisible. Affiliate means any entity that controls is controlled by or is under common control with a party. Consultants mean a party's bankers, accountants, auditors, attorneys, financial advisors, and independent contractors. Disclosure and use restrictions. Recipients shall not disclose confidential information to any other person or entity without disclosure's prior written consent. Recipient may only use confidential information for the purpose. Re recipient must use a reasonable degree of care to protect confidential information. It receives and to prevent any unauthorized use or disclosure of confidential information. Exclusions. Confidential information does not include information that was, one, was known by recipient without restriction before receipt of the confidential information. Two, is publicly available through no fault of the recipient. Or three, is rightfully received by recipient from a third party without a duty of confidentiality. Recipient may disclose confidential information to the extent it is required by law if it makes reasonable efforts to provide prior notice to disclosure and seeks protective treatment of the confidential information. So I imagine, you know, if the police break down your door and there is a warrant for certain thing, information about your business, you're supposed to tell the police or the FBI, give me one second, let me just make sure Tim Cook is okay with you going through my stuff. The fact that a disclosure was legally required will not alter the nature of the confidential information. For the avoidance of doubt with respect to any person that is subject to this agreement, confidential information does not include information about the person's own wages, hours, or working conditions, if applicable, including harassment, discrimination, or any other conduct the person has reason to believe is unlawful. Now, this is interesting. So when they say any other conduct the person has reason to believe is unlawful, this is a really interesting one. So let's just say something ha happens, I don't know, hypothetically. Let's say a right to repair bill passes in the state of Minnesota, which makes certain conduct by Apple illegal or against the law. Let's say that there's any sort of part of this program where they are not making certain things available. Would I be able to talk about that? Would I be able to break this confidentiality agreement? Because, I, again, I'm allowed to talk about any conduct 
a person has reason to believe is unlawful. So if a right to repair bill passes, does that mean that I get around this non-disclosure agreement? And does that mean that I can sign it? look into the program, figure out how much of it is useful and how much is BS, and then once that right to repair program comes out, break the NDA. Uh, this is something that I think may actually be a loophole. Independent development. Each party acknowledges that the other party may, currently or in the future, make use goods, services, or technologies that compete with its own, develop information internally, or receive information from other third parties that may be similar to its own confidential information, or evaluate, invest in, or do business with its competitors or potential competitors. Neither party's execution of this agreement nor its receipt of any confidential information will restrict such activities. Neither party nor their affiliates or consultants shall issue press releases or other public statements regarding this agreement or its subject matter without the other party's prior written approval. Provided, however, Apple and its affiliates may disclose the final results of any supplier, vendor, or other partner responsibility assessments pursuant to its corporate compliance, corporate responsibility, and slash or annual reporting programs. So what this really comes down to is it comes down to a high, it's kind of like the hiring methodology I've talked about before, where I will either give you $20 an hour or what's behind this door. But you can't see what's behind this door until you sign this agreement that says that you are going to work here in exchange for what is behind this door. Now, maybe what's behind the door is $50 an hour. Maybe what's behind the door is a hundred bucks. <laughs> like you really don't know, and that's the problem that I would have with signing this type of agreement. That's very likely why you see very low utilization of the Apple IRP program. But above all, this is probably why you see very little criticism of the program because those who would actually be able to criticize it, who understand the program, not only are not allowed to talk about the program, they're not even allowed to talk about the fact that they are in it or ever signed this NDA to begin with. So Apple is really putting duct tape over the mouths of anybody that gets involved with this program, in my opinion, to ensure that they avoid bad press or to ensure that these individuals that enter this program are not able to use the fact that the program is missing a lot of parts, a lot of data, a lot of schematics, a lot of chipsets, a lot of information in order to bolster right to repair bills that are moving forward in many states. Return of confidential information. Upon written notice, recipients shall return all tangible confidential information then in its, its affiliates and its consultants' possession, the discloser, and destroy all confidential information that cannot be returned, including any emails or other electronic documents containing confidential information, but excluding automatic electronic backups and archive systems within 15 days after receipt of such notice. Protection period. Restrictions on use and disclosure of confidential information will remain in effect for seven years from the date the confidential information was disclosed. However, restrictions on confidential information containing personally identifiable information will remain in effect perpetually. So, if I sign this agreement in 2023, I would not be able to talk about this in a right to repair context until 2031. Term and termination. Either party may terminate this agreement upon 15 days advance written notice to the other party. Upon termination of this agreement, each party's disclosure and use obligations shall survive. That doesn't really sound like termination. Governing law and disputes. This agreement will be governed by the laws of the state of Delaware, without reference to conflicts of laws principles. The confidentiality provisions of this agreement will be enforceable under the Delaware Uniform Trade Secrets Act, Delaware Code and Title VI, Sex 2001, at, I went to public school, but I can't read this shit. All disputes arising under or in connection with this agreement will be finally settled under the then current rules of arbitration of the International Chamber of Commerce by three arbitrators appointed in accordance with such rules. The arbitration will be con conducted in English in San Francisco, California. Now that's the deal break. <laughs> Judgment upon any award rendered by the arbitrator may be confirmed or enforced in any court having jurisdiction. The arbitrator shall award to the prevailing party its costs and expenses, including its attorney's fees. The prevailing party shall also be entitled to attorney's fees and costs in any action to confirm and slash or enforce any arbitration award in any judicial proceedings. All material created for the arbitration proceedings, all other documents produced by another party in the proceeding, not otherwise in the public domain, and all awards in the arbitration will be deemed confidential information except to the extent disclosure may be required by um, of a party by legal duty to protect protect or pursue a legal right or to enforce a challenge and award in legal proceedings before a court or other judicial authority. So if you actually go through arbitration because you believe that there is some sort of break in the law here, you're not allowed to talk about it when it's done. Either party may bring court proceedings in any court having jurisdiction to seek an injunction, specific performance, or other equitable relief to enforce any right or obligation under this agreement. 
The parties agreed that no bond needs to be posted to obtain injunctive or equitable relief, but if required by the law or the court, the parties consent to a bond in the lowest amount permitted by law. 10. Entire agreement. This agreement constitutes the entire agreement between the parties with respect to and supersedes all prior or contemporaneous oral or written agreements or contractual provisions concerning any confidential information disclosed by the parties in connection with the same or similar response. Any amendments and waivers must be in writing and signed by both parties. Agreements, addenda, or supplements entered into between the parties prior to the effective date and reference prior confidentiality provisions in connection with the same or similar purpose are amended to reference this agreement in place of the prior provisions. In other words, we own you. We own you, and we are going to ensure that if you get into this program, you are not going to be allowed to talk about it. You're not going to be allowed to say that you're in this program. If there are any problems with this program, you're not going to be able to talk to legislators about it until 2031. And uh, by the way, we're not actually going to tell you what we're giving you access to until you sign this NDA, which ensures that you're not able to talk about it with anybody else. If you're wondering why it is people have not been running to sign up for the IRP program, but more importantly, if you're wondering why, in spite of the fact that this program doesn't make a lot available, you haven't heard any repair shops that signed up for a complaint about it, it's because they do not want to be put essentially through a legal bulldozer as a result of having signed this particular agreement. So at this point in time, I am going to hit this button over here because this seems like an absolute... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to put a comment over here. Cannot discuss what is in a what is in program and do not know what is in program until i sign agreement that says i cannot discuss what is in program i decline because i do not want to be property of tim cook so we are going to have to find another way to deal with what i'm talking about in this video where I'm trying to fix devices that are not fixable at this point in time. And the reason that that is the case is not because I'm trying to be unreasonable. I'm really not. I just do not want to be bulldozed by a $2 trillion company legally, nor do I want to give them the ability to do that. Hopefully this video gives you a little bit of insight into why it is people don't sign up for this program because my comments often flood over, particularly in Reddit r slash Apple. Why don't you just join Apple's IRP program? Uh, you <laughs> stuff like that kind of makes it really, really difficult. And what we're talking about with right to repair is not signing your life away or your ability to speak away in order to get access to a sleep sensor to a MacBook. Hopefully this makes sense. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Have a lovely day. By the way, before we end the video, check this out. I'm actually starting to learn how a lot of this stuff works. I have not caught up to Linus by any stretch of the imagination, but check this out. We got all different types of, uh, we got, we got t-shirts, we got mugs. We're making fun of, uh, a, a certain you know who company because they lost in the state of Colorado. Uh, we have a dealership tears mug over here. We've got uh, you know support right to repair. You'll own everything and they'll be pissed. It's not lying. It's commercial real estate. So do check it out down below. Bit.ly slash Rossman store. That's bit.ly slash Rossman store. Spell with two S's and two N's. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.